Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at hooking up a Unity project to a Rails API. This is going to be another one of those speed runs, not meant to be taken seriously, but more just as an, you know, fun little exercise. Uh, last time we did this with, I believe, Unreal Engine, we hooked it up to an API of its own. Uh, this time we're going to be doing things a little bit differently, uh, but we're going to be running the API out of our WSL window, so it's going to be locally hosted. So we'll take a look at this. To get started, I'm going to have to uh, start the timer, and we're just going to do a Rails new video space dash dash API. That'll run the API flag for us. Uh, then we want to open up the Unity Hub. I'm going to be using the current LTS, which is 22.3.7 F1. So we're using that version. We can then create a new project. I'll call this the uh, Rails API video or something. I'll go with 3D, although that really doesn't matter. We can go ahead and we can wait for that to open. While this runs, I'm gonna go ahead and CD into the video project and then run a code dot to open this up in VS Code because we do have to configure the Rails project a little bit. It's not too difficult, but you know, it's basic API stuff. So we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna hit Control Plus a couple times and hope that VS Code decides to actually do something. We'll come into our gem file and then right around like line 30 something, there should be the cores rack gem. So we'll go ahead and uncomment that, run a bundle command. That's gonna let us do our core stuff. So we can come into our config, our initializers and our cores.rb. We can uncomment the stuff that's, oops, the stuff that's in here, which should be this Rails application middleware config stuff. Then for our origins, we're just gonna allow everything for now. Ideally, you would want to only allow the IP address of your actual server, but this is fine for what we're doing here. Go ahead and close this. Now, as for our actual API, what I think we should do, let's do a uh, Rails G scaffold for a uh, scaffold for a player. And we'll say we have, uh, I don't know, like an X of type decimal, a Y of type decimal, and a Z of type decimal. So we're just saving like player transform information, I guess. So that gives us our scaffold. Let's uh, let's actually do a Rails DB colon migrate now to migrate our database, and then let's do a Rails S. But this is where we're gonna run into our first step. We actually need to get the IP address for our WSL to make sure we're running this right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say this needs to run as Rails S with a dash B, and we're gonna set this to run as 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. So that will now run it there. And then we can come over to our Windows PowerShell, which I forgot to clear out, but that's fine. And then in here, we can run a IP config. And this is gonna show you a bunch of different information, but this isn't quite gonna show you what you need. So what you actually wanna do is come over to, I guess we have to stop our server, come over to your, uh, your Rails uh, Linux setup. And then in here, you wanna run a P uh, space ADDR. This is gonna spit back a bunch of nonsense, but you wanna look for your ETHO or ETH zero, and then in here, you're gonna have an INET, and then you're gonna grab that IP address, and that's gonna be the one that we're gonna use in our uh, in our project here. So we're gonna go ahead and start our server again with our Rails S-B zeros, and then we can come over to our project here. We're gonna right click new folder, and then we'll name the scripts, and then in our scripts folder, we'll right click create, and we'll create a C sharp script, and we can name this effectively whatever we would like, but I'm gonna call it, oops, I'm gonna call it something like uh, API Manager, I guess, something like that. We can then right click and create an empty. It's just gonna create an empty game object for us. Unity is gonna be cringe and recompile a bunch of stuff, even though I didn't ask it to. I should now be able to add this as a component over here. So now we have that added. So now let's go ahead and let's open this. This should open with VS Code for me. It might open for, or like Visual Studio for you. Uh, but we'll see. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this, come into the API manager here, and then we're gonna go ahead and set this one up real fast. So the API manager is not that difficult. You're gonna have a couple of your usual things in here. We can get rid of the systems collections and the rest of the stuff, uh, but we do want to be using Unity Engine networking like that. We're gonna be using that. And then in here, we can create a private string. This is gonna be our uh, API URL. So we'll say API URL. This should probably be a const, but you get the idea. We're gonna say HTTP colon slash slash. Then we're gonna paste in that IP address we got from our IP ADDR command. Then we're gonna do a colon slash, or a colon 3000 slash, and then players, because that's the name of the model or the scaffold that we generated. So we're gonna be using that. Now in our start method, we're just gonna be calling one thing. There's gonna be a call to uh, get for like a get request. So we're gonna say get request, and then we're gonna have one for a post request, post request like that. 
for our Git request, we're just gonna do a start coroutine. It's gonna be for a Git request method. It's gonna take in the API URL, and then we have to tell it specifically which ID we want. So for which player, I guess. In this case, I'm just gonna have it be like the first option we get. Uh, but this will change depending on your like implementation logic. We can then say we need a IE numerator with a get request and then a string of URI. And the reason why we're doing this is because uh, this is of course all gonna be happening like, you know, async. So we're just expecting to have to do that. Now, Copilot here is already trying to complete some of this logic. I'm gonna go ahead and read through this. This seems fine for this web request. Our string pages, we split it slash, page length of one is fine. Uh, but we can actually switch this a bit and say we want to switch on the web request dot result and then we can do oops we can do a couple of cases here uh if i tab this over we can do a couple of cases where we say uh, we need a case for unity web request dot result dot connection error and then we have another case for the data processing error where we're just gonna debug.log. We're gonna have another case for the protocol error, that's fine. And then we'll log that one. And then we're gonna, oops, we're gonna have one more case for the result success. And in here, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We can just start by debug logging the result success, that's fine. And now if we actually call this in our start, we should be able to test this. So we'll go ahead and move this over to the side here and then we'll leave Unity over here. So this should be fine. Uh, it'll have to recompile because it's incredibly cringe like that. Let me move this over. Uh, but now if we come over to our console and we click play, we should have this in the scene. We should at least get something here. Now it's gonna tell us there's a non-secure error. What this means is effectively, because we're using this locally, we have a HTTP request. We do have to come into our edit and I think it's our project settings and we have to search for HTTP. This is of course not accessible at all. So it's impossible to see anything, but you should be able to find it and then switch from all uh, allow downloads over HTTP to always allowed because it's currently not allowed. You should then be able to exit out of this and you have to do this when your project isn't playing uh, otherwise it will just reset itself so now if we press play hopefully we'll get a different message where it'll say uh, 404 not found for this debug.log if we come over here we can see in our console in a rails terminal that we couldn't find a player with an id of one which is good we haven't created that player yet but we're getting the error that means it's at least hitting this so let's go ahead and let's create that player let's come into a rail c and let's do a player dot create and we'll pass in an x of 100.0 a y of i don't know like one and a z of uh let's just say 100.0 again and i'm actually going to change this one to be a 0.0 as well just for the sake of consistency that will then insert this this is now stored in our database so now we can do a player dot first right gets our first player with an x uh, a y and a z we'll hit control d run the rails s again dash b of 0, 0.0 whatever and now we should be good so let's stop our server we can hit clear press the play button again this should then hit our terminal here we can see we completed a 200 request for uh, setting the player etc and now in our console here we get back a id of one an x of 100 a y of one a z of 100 so that's working we're now doing our get request so what we should probably do now is actually use this so to to use this we're going to go ahead and over here uh, although we could also do this like from Unity, but we'll just do it in our scripts here. We'll just right click new file and say this is going to be a coordinate data.cs. We're going to start by doing a system dot, oops, system dot serializable, I guess, well, serializable. And then we'll say this has a public class of coordinate data. And then in here, we want to say this has a public float x. And then hopefully we can get Copilot to help us. There we go. And then we need a constructor for some public data, which takes in a X, a Y, and a Z, and it sets this dot X, this dot Y, and this dot Z. So that gives us a quick little object to mess around with. And now what we can do is instead of just debugging this, we can say, let's create a coordinate data for the chords. And if we come over here, we should be able to hit control dot. Uh, it's saying to generate the class, but if we come over here and just click into Unity real quick, this should hopefully try to compile. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out so it actually compiles because it's being upset. This should then allow us to use it here. So now we can go ahead and do this, do our coordinates, chords, and then this is gonna be equal to a JSON utility dot from JSON or the coordinate data. 
And then in here we need to do a, oops, a web request dot download handler dot text. So that's gonna give us our coordinates. And now we just have to say transform dot position because we put this on the player, we can immediately call transform dot position on this, uh, on this actual game object here. So what we can do is we could say, let's create a new uh, 3D object. Let's create a capsule, I guess. And then let's change the API manager to be on the capsule instead and then delete this game object. So now this capsule is our player. And then we can say, all right, for our actual player now, we want to set the, the transform position to be a new vector three. And then we can grab these coordinates and say chords.x.y.z. And now we're setting that position on play. So it's going to get the position from our Rails database and then it's going to set it as soon as it finishes compiling again. Uh, and then I should be able to full screen this and move this over again. And if we now press play, I would expect, uh, assuming we don't get an error, for our player to disappear. But the reason why they disappear is actually because if we double click on them, you can see they've moved to 100 comma 1 comma 100. So they've actually changed positions. If we stop playing, you'll see they get teleported back over there to the origin. If we press play, they're going to get teleported back here to the foreground again. So that's grabbing the information from our database. That's good. Now let's take a look at how we can actually post to it. It's pretty simple. It's just going to be another coroutine. We'll just say start coroutine. It's going to be for a post request. And it's once again going to take in a URL. Oops, a URL. But the URL is just going to be, uh, oops, our base URL. Because in Rails land, when we do a post request, we're actually posting to slash players. And this is implicitly going to the players controller create action, right? So by just doing slash players, it's going to figure that out because it's a post request. It needs to go to players create. So that takes care of that. Let's come down here and then let's say, all right, we need another IE numerator, right? IE numerator for the post request, which takes in a string URI. And then we can come in here and we can say, all right, we, we now need to create some coordinate data, right? Which is going to be data equals new coordinate data. And then in here we can do our transform.position.x.y and .z. And that's going to transform our position into some data that we can send to the back end, right? Now, the next thing we can do is we can say, all right, we now need to do a string JSON data equals uh, JSON utility. And then this is a good point to point out or a good time to point out. I don't actually do a lot of Unity development, so there's a good chance I'm doing this wrong. Uh, but hopefully you'll forgive me because I'm trying to mix so many technologies these days. But we'll do a Unity web request and then we'll say this is a new Unity web request, which takes in the URI and a post string, which is telling it it's a post request. Then we can do a byte array for the body raw where we do system.txt.encoding, UTF-8, get bytes for the JSON data. We can then do a web request upload handler equals a new upload handler uh, raw. That's fine, but I don't think this needs to be cast like that. We can then do a web request download handler for a new download handler buffer. And then finally, we can set the request header for a content type of application slash JSON. This is required for Ruby on Rails because it's cringe. So it needs that just so that it knows what it's doing. And then we can say yield return web request dot send web request. That's going to give us a result, right? So we have to do another switch on our web request dot result. And this is where we've now written this code probably twice. Uh, so we should really be considering uh, maybe handling this a little bit differently. So what we're going to do is we're going to just copy and paste this in. And then instead of handling it twice, we should really be thinking about like abstracting this. Uh, but instead of doing the debug log error here with the pages, we're just going to say, oops, we're just going to say this has an error. The error is whatever the web request error is. Down here, we're going to do something similar. It's going to be the HTTP error, right? And it's going to be the web request error for that. And then finally here for our uh, received, we can just say we received a web request download their uh, that text or whatever and then at this point we're good because we've now posted it to the to the database so we're going to post this uh or we're going to do a post request here with the base url it's going to go down here to our post request and then we should be good now it's of course trying to use the base uri because of my my notes let's change this to the api url that should get rid of the error and now let's go ahead and let's open up unity hopefully uh, and then as soon as it's done compiling for like the 30th time this video, uh, we should be able to hit clear. We should be able to hit play. And then we should in our terminal here, see 
that we have an insert line. So we can see we're processing player, create as blah, blah, blah. And we insert into players X, Y, and Z, where our X is zero, our Y is zero, and our Z is zero, because we're getting that from our transform position. So that's cool, but now let's go ahead and let's stop this and let's change our position to like 1000, uh, 2048 and 4096, right? I do that. Now let's go ahead and uh, let's press, uh, actually we have to come into our VS code real quick. We have to comment out the get request so that we don't reset our position. We'll only do a post. And then once this compiles, we should be able to press play and hopefully we should see this in our terminal here. So this should be getting posted. And now we have an X set to 1000, a Y set to 2048, and a Z set to 4096, which is gonna be for our latest players. So we could, in theory, now grab this latest player if we wanted to, and we could then say, all right, this player is gonna be whichever one we're setting. So let's go ahead and let's do a rail C, do a player.last. Our last player has an ID of three. So let's go ahead and let's start our server again. And then we can come over to our uh, our VS code, we can get rid of the post, we can change the, uh, the get request to use the third player instead. And now if we reset all of this to zero, and we hopefully saved the script as well, uh, we should be able to uh, save this, it'll compile, I'm gonna have to reset these positions. But once I set these to zero, we can then press play. And then I would expect the player to get teleported to like, you know, 4096 again, which he has. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the timer there. Uh, because it looks like we've accomplished what we set out to do. It's now a Unity project that's communicating with a Rails API. And as you saw, the Rails API was actually really easy to set up. It took like all of maybe like a minute or two. Uh, and then most of the time was just spent, you know, setting up Unity, which uh, to be fair, also wasn't that bad, right? Like the only thing we're really doing is doing a get and a post request, which would look pretty similar in JavaScript land. And in fact, I'm being pretty generous here because in JavaScript land, I would probably... Uh, just not do any error handling and just pretend that everything worked okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you at least uh, found this entertaining, if nothing else. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.